everybody welcome back to the channel the main event here and today we have a very 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 special guest uh my boy semper semper say hello to the people what's up what's going on man uh how you doing over there i'm good uh just you know recovering from japan trip a little bit sick um i miss japan not really i feel like that's what everyone said <laughs> uh how, how was japan for you like i feel like it's such a tourist country i don't know how to describe it like I, I love it so much. I, I definitely, definitely gonna go back there one day. But exactly. I, I could so never consider living visit, there. But never live. Exactly. Yeah, I, I could. I totally can understand that perspective. Exactly. <laughs> definitely. Understand. Like yeah, you, you, just, you, <clears throat> you gotta know more than a little bit of Japanese to like to really enjoy it. You, you, like the weather is very, very like. I'm in Canada, right? So it's super cold always. But Japan is so humid because there's the water everywhere and it's so hot. So it was. Oh, it, it took yeah, time. Makes like, sense. Yeah. Like I, I eat very cooked food. A lot of the, the, you know, the fish and the meat they cook very, uh, very not raw, but they they don't cook as much. So, getting used to all that is like, yeah, it's, it's like a little a bit of a pain lot, a in just a couple like, days. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of fresh food versus like, right, all the way down stuff. Exactly. Well, because what, what's your like your nationality? Uh, I'm I'm Asian, Pakistan. So okay, yeah, I feel like, so yeah, I feel like so you don't understand it too. Like I feel like we cook a lot of our food. Yeah, like we we cook our food very very. Well, unless I'm completely wrong, but no, 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 no. I, I totally feel like a lot of the Middle Eastern cultures will cook their food like, like uh, cook, cook all the way through essentially. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, like a lot of open fire, a lot of uh, yeah, a lot, lot of heat. No, I, I, right. I, I, I love Middle Eastern food. Uh, exactly. Food. Yeah, it's like some of my favorite stuff in the world. Um. So, question of the day, uh, before we start everything for everybody, uh, let us let me know in the comments below your first time hearing about Sempra. Um for me it was uh, i think just watching you on was it vancouver that you won yeah i think that was a lot of people's first times um hearing and seeing about you other times you know they it might be more funny situations which i'll let them answer in the comments below um speaking <laughs> of Va vancouver and you being in uh canada i'm assuming you're gonna try to go and defend your title this season right yeah so <clears throat> the, the plan is toronto and vancouver i'm gonna try my best to win one of them so i get the invite yeah, that's cause, that's cause the goal because so i'll give you guys a lot of you the viewers who may not follow things as closely Semper essentially got his invite off one event he won vancouver and they just what did locals and the uh, global challenges i think yep yeah like and that's actually like insane to think about right because like most people who get their invites have gone to like four five six regionals uh gone to an internet like gone to a number of events to get their yeah. invites and you just went went to one took the win and just like grabbed the rest of the points doing other little things here and there yeah it's probably like the most inexpensive invite of all time <laughs> yeah and I'm, I'm very grateful for that right like i unfortunately this season i, I didn't have the both resources in time or money to to travel much I wanted to save as much of my Vancouver winnings to go to Japan. Uh, so I was like, I, I guess I had a plan to go to NEIC if everything went wrong, but I tried my best to get as much as I could just, you know, without needing to go. So it worked out in the end. Uh, I, I paid, you know, I, I didn't need to take any loans for Japan. My, my parents didn't need to pay for nothing. So I, it felt very good to be able to do that and get the invite. That's like that's a very personal now, but yeah, yeah, no, it was very. Nah, 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 it felt very good to, to get I off one. I feel event. like people haven't really gotten a chance to like know about you, right? So oh yeah, it's a yeah. Good opportunity. Also, I want you guys to you guys probably didn't even notice, but how big of a flex that is. Vancouver was a very early in the season event. Bro said he saved his money from Vancouver for Japan. He was not even qualified for Japan yet, but he knew that he would be. Even though no, he, was probably, he probably wouldn't make it to another regional, he still knew he'd make it to Japan. That is actually <laughs> a I... crazy flex on the slide. <laughs> that is such no, a that's flex. That's, that's not, I mean, I was almost there. Like, I, I, I don't feel like it's a flex. I mean, being 200 or 300 is almost there. So I, I guess I didn't have any... I didn't feel as inclined to go until the GCs came out. The GCs were very helpful. So that that made it a lot easier. Just to be able to get like quick 60 points off the GCs. Then it was just locals. Yeah. So I guess every, everything just fell into place, right? Like we didn't we didn't find out about GCs or locals till then. That makes it a bigger flex because 
we did not have premier challenges they they gave us to those gave those gave those to us like mid-season and yep. they put the group challenges out out of nowhere and we didn't even know that there would be three we just knew there would be the first one like yeah. <laughs> they just kind of just dumped <laughs> that on us so he, he just knew somehow some way bro was praying <laughs> mid <-half. laughs> and then on top of that you not only you only make it to one event but then you make it to worlds and you come in fifth place which is like pretty insane because like this is i'm pretty sure this is your first this is your first actual full vgc season yep yeah yeah so like even before this season like did you in sword and shield did you play like any of the players cups um anything like no, that like i started like right right before the world championships 2020 uh 2020 yeah like uh, the way i got to vgc was um they were sending around like a flyer thing for my school there was a big event um esports event and so i was just looking for games that i played and i, I didn't see any and i saw pokemon and i was like i was confused because I, I didn't know competitive pokemon was a thing so i said you know in one month i'm gonna get good enough and I'm, I'm gonna win the tournament and so i ended up winning there and then i ended up really really enjoying the game so That's yeah literally insane. right before world that's actually insane because well 2020 i don't think we had a world championship we got, the circle got canceled um uh, sorry, 2022 is what i meant my bad oh so that's even a that's, I, I that's, that's even crazier right yeah, yeah. because <laughs> you, you started in t at right before world 2022 and yeah. made it to world 2023 <laughs> <laughs> i mean and, i feel like yeah i mean it, it's, it's very cool to see that you know new players can do it I'm, I'm not i can say that now because i'm not the only one you know mckelder yeah. dude the dude got second and he's yeah. even he's even I, so i have about a year and two months in the game he has eight months which is yeah he started december 2022 right of VGC. yeah i think he's just he's I unbelievable think, but i think he's, he's like a prominent singles player isn't he yeah but i mean it's a very very different game, very different sure. game like and like, it's not like he did anything small he got top top Two, you got top, top two. two World Championship. Yeah, though. his first stream match ever was actually yeah, <laughs> was, that was, was actually World that was really Finals, funny. Which was that crazy. was really funny. Yeah, it's actually insane because like I was, I remember I was telling people like I think he played a lot of Ram Bats, and I was like, I think yep. that the the Ram Bats to VGC thing is that there's some merit to it, like just getting handed six mons and yeah, just having to manage those resources in a way that doesn't get you swept immediately because it's so mm, easy to get that's, swept. That's actually a very good point. Yeah, like I. That's a good point. Like I started playing Rambats a few months ago, and I feel like I'm a much better player after trying those um, than than I was before. It's just a it's just a weird like resource management, and it sometimes can be very read heavy, but also yep. it's like very punishing if you get a if you get a turn wrong, like it's so punishing. So it's like I see. I think it translates yeah. really well. That does that does make sense. Yeah, I feel like where, where singles is more, um, you know, you're, you're playing towards the end game. Rambats definitely you're you're trying to win the turn. I guess that's how it describes VGC, right? Um, yeah, because VGC wait, 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 I feel wait. like is less punishing if you get one turn wrong typically. Yeah, like I guess with VGC you're trying to work towards that turn. You're trying to win that turn versus singles, right? You 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 you're building an end game for fifty turns ahead, which is very different. I wouldn't say yeah. either is harder or easier. I feel like different. everyone's very supremacist about which which mode's easier or which one's harder. But I feel like you know after playing both, like they're very very difficult and they both have very different skill sets. So I can't I, like I guess McKelder is like the perfect example of you know you yeah. just try your best and you eventually get to essentially the goal is just know? to be good at Pokemon and exactly. find your way in whatever format. <laughs> right. So speaking of Pokemon, uh, I do have your team that you went to uh, Worlds with on the screen and you can see it. Uh, interesting nicknames. Tell me about the nickname scheme. Anything uh, special about these nicknames? Not really. There are songs, I think, except for the Moogus. I thought of that like on the, on the plane. I was so proud of that name. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Ranger. Mr. Ranger I, I was so proud of it. Uh, th th those are the songs uh, in, in relation, like Pitter Pat, like Rain. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's the only one that, you know, other than Fian Pao, but they, so, they didn't have any specific meanings. Okay, so this team itself, where did it start? Like, did it start with any particular Pokemon? Did it start with the core? Like, how did this team start? How did it start to come about? So two two months ago, um, two months ago I was working with it was Aaron Trailer, and I told My him guy, he's been on the channel before. Oh shit, that's <laughs> awesome! I was telling him he's like, "There's no way Rain doesn't get better." It's just you know we, we've been working with Palafin, who you know Rain 
doesn't want to be swapping around every turn. That just it kind of breaks her yeah. flow. Waste the turns. And Azumarill ended up being the compromise, and Azumarill's terrible. So it's like <laughs> we got two new rain sweepers, which is like uh just so much better. And so I built a team that I was using for like a month at the start of the format. It was it's Basque Legion, Pelipper, uh, Among Us, Iron Hands, and it was King Gambit. Uh, on one slot, and I believe the six slot kept changing. It's like Arcanine and, and some other stuff, but it looked very similar to the. If you know like what Rogav was playing at uh, North at NASC, mm -hmm. it was very similar to that. It just made you know I put a Basket Legion on it. Uh, I put a King Gambit on it. Otherwise, very very similar. So I, I was playing that team for a very long time, and so I, I knew I loved Rain. Uh, I've been playing Rain Series One. Rain was my favorite team. Series three rains my favorite team, and then series four, I said rains my favorite team. So I, I started grinding rain very early. Uh, I got good results, but eventually, rain had a it had like a problem, and that's it. Just doesn't do very good into torn. And if you've played any ladder in the past month, oh my god, that's the yeah. only thing people on ladder play. Yeah. Torn HO. So yeah. it, it kind of hurt, right? Like constantly losing to these kids. I, I felt like I could beat if I had a different team. But I was constantly using them. So then I said, you know, I guess I made a decision then. I said, I'm going to build a team that's weak to Torn because I believe at the World Championships, people aren't going to bring Torn. And that ended up paying off because Torn didn't do nearly as good. And, you know, like Maddie plays with Torn, that was Torn balance, which is much easier to deal with on a team like this. So Torn HR didn't do nearly as good. The, the bet paid off. And um, eventually I ran into Turan. If you know who that is, Ara Rayquaza. Mm -hmm. it, it was on a Limitless Tour. And he had the same six. And he was playing under an alt, but his switch name wasn't changed. It was, it was, it was still Turan. <laughs> so I was funny. like, dude, this is this is the greatest team ever. And I beat him. And, and I still was like, I had to work so hard for that win. This has to be the team. And so, yeah, like that that was like a month before the World Championship. I said, I'm just going to lock this team in. And I think that's a yeah. good lesson because I think so many people just hyper focus in on their like showdown laddering results right yeah um versus like just developing their own comfort with the team or playing in tours right because you played in a tour and the team felt better in a tour yeah. than it did on ladder and essentially exactly. you know, world's, world is world is a the tour it's not a ladder competition so i think that's something a good takeaway for players like new and old like not to i guess over uh over look into your your ladder results with any particular exactly. team because it's a bit strange because Things things happen on ladder that just don't happen in tournaments. Things happen in tournament. Yep. Tournaments you get a chance to adjust, right? You just lose. Mm -hmm. You lose to a tailwind matchup on ladder. You don't get a chance to like change your minds. You just got to take the loss and move on. Exactly. Like uh, I feel like ladder is a very good resource and the main resource for most players. But I feel like the greatest thing about the best players, which I haven't gotten to do this yet, and I'm not even close to to achieving this yet, but they. Only work on their own play when it comes to ladder. They don't worry about what the opponent did. They don't worry about the opponent's team. Like, obviously, unless you're, you know, gauging the meta. But it, it's 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 about... You're trying to make yourself better, right? It doesn't matter. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what point I'm trying to get at. But what I'm trying to say is, like... No, it's all right to lose on ladder. It's, it's all right I, uh, to lose on ladder. I totally get what you're saying. Because uh, I've actually had Jody say something like that to me when he was playing... I think when he was on the channel, he mentioned where, like not he's not overly thinking about what his opponent's gonna do he's just thinking about mm -hmm. what he's gonna do optimally for exactly. himself so i think that's like another really good takeaway for players to like to 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 leave with if they watch this video and want to improve their play so i'm gonna go through each of the mods i actually do want to start with godango for obvious reasons because that's my guy <laughs> especially because uh i run my godango a little bit different than this um i yeah. see you have max p timid so like what what made you go with like this spread what made you go with max p timid on the godango Okay, so when I first saw Turan use a team, uh, I was with a different rain building group. And I was the only one running the team at the time. And I didn't know their exact EVs. And I was running very, very bulky Golden Go, like four speed, max bulk Golden Go. It was very, very bulky. <laughs> I, I mean, I like that, but I think the team has a couple weaknesses. That being like Rillaboom, bulkier uh, Urshfu, kind of tough. Uh, generally, just outspeeding things was very very helpful and so when i eventually got with turan and i ended up talking with him uh after playing his team they ended up sharing this spread and you know i, I guess i thought about it and i was like it, it does kind of flip some matchups right like 
I'm, I'm faster than Rillaboom consistently. I'm tripping the bulky Urshifu's. I'm consistently outspeeding other Golden Ghosts. Like, I can sacrifice not having very much um, investment because I have Fake Out, I have Redirection, and I have a lot of other offensive to deal with. Um, and that's why, you know, I was running Leftovers. That's why Citrus Berry is so good on a Golden Ghost like this. Uh, and that's what Jody suggested, actually. It was a really good suggestion because, you know, you get Wild Charge and it, it does about 51%. You literally eat, eat citrus, right? Now you take another one, and you're super fast. Uh, I don't know. I feel like this golden go just is everything. Like, I'm very, I'm very, very happy with this golden go. Uh, yeah, I, I like it. citrus golden go a lot. I think right. back in Charlotte, I had, I was telling people, I was like, Yo, should I try citrus golden go? And everyone was like, No, leftovers, leftovers, leftovers. I should have took, I yeah. should have to my gut and just went with the citrus because it's just so much more immediate recovery. So you're not like exactly. spending time protecting all the time trying to get health back. You can play right. aggressively. Like I, I think it's yeah. a really good call. So yeah, so Citrus was, yeah, was a very good call, but Max Speed is generally just you outspeed a lot of the threats on the team, so it's a, I, I guess it's not too much to think about, yeah. Oh um I do want to go to the, I'll do one of mine at a time. So the the uh the Pelipper. Um obviously a lot of rain teams are have abandoned Pelipper for manual rain, right? So what made you go with just like auto rain? Was it like the saving a turn, not having to set up? That's, that's pretty much it. Like VGC is so, you know, like I feel like that's the reason Tailwind isn't as good at the highest level. It's just like for one turn you're doing nothing. It's just you, 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 you can't do that. Like I'll, I'll take running a Pokemon that's not very strong. I'll admit it. Like I love Pelipper, but Pelipper just doesn't do much in a lot of matchups. I'll take you know a, a, a one that doesn't do too much for instant rain. I sometimes I just need that, right? You need the, the instant pressure of of both the hurricane and the spreading strikes. Like sometimes you just you don't want to have to set it up, right? I guess the TLDR is just instant weather is always going to be so much better than manual. It's just, especially if you build a whole team around it, you need the instant weather. Yeah, I actually uh, agree with that because I, I I play a lot of Tornadus now because I just kind of like the mod. Um, but I can definitely see where, like, there are times where I want to click both Tailwind and Rain Dance. Exactly. But obviously, you can't play, click both both turns, um, and then, like you have to make a call on which one you click, and then you have to like use another turn setting up the other one. Obviously, you don't even have Tailwind on this Pelipper, but um, you yeah. just have like Wide Guard to for and protect, which I think is good too because I, I kind of like Pelipper with Wide Guard on it. It just protects you against like other Golden Goals and like Specs Flutters. They have to make a call whether they lock in. Um, but I do think having the rain already set up is something that is really important, I guess, at the yeah. higher levels because you don't want to waste turns. Shout out to Polytoad coming back, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm so excited for Polytoad. It's gonna be so good. <laughs> Pelipper is so bad. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, Pelipper is no, so it sucks. bad. It sucks. Pelipper sucks. It's like, so bad, Polytoad yeah. with his bulk and like helping hand and like Parish Song. Like, Parish Song. Parish Song after like Rain Boosted Surging Strikes is actually gonna be so yeah. nice. No, it's gonna be so good. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. Like, um, okay, can you imagine like Goth, Polytoad, and Urshfu on the same team? Yeah, actually, like, insane. You're the amount of modes blowing them up, and then you can like switch back. Like, it's just gonna be nuts. It's gonna be insane. Yeah. Um, but the so the the Pelipper spread itself. Anything specific about what it does, or just like um, um, I guess one of the people in my old Rain group was Gavin, Gavin Michaels. Mm. He made the spread really early, and I just. I guess nothing, it doesn't do anything special other than constantly outspeed <laughs> Rillabooms and Heatrans. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, guess, I just got used to the spread. That's why I ran it. I know other people within my group, Turan uh, in specific, I think they ran different spreads. But yeah, I, I just I just like being faster and taking KOs because I, I feel like if I make Pelper slow, it's just going to get KO'd anyway. It just has too many weaknesses. Uh, I'd rather, you know, get a big hit off on Rillaboom or get a pump on the Heatran first and then go down. So, nothing, yeah. nothing special. <laughs> yeah, and Hurricane is actually Hurricane with Drizzle is way more reliable than Bleak and Storm. So I respect yeah. the call for sure. Um, so we got the Urshifu here. Um, this is actually a very specific kind of spread, very specific tarot type and item. I like Scarf Urshifu a lot. So, like, tell me about the Urshifu. Uh, speed is just to outspeed Scarf Flanders consistently. Uh, it is a little bit of an issue on this team, but it's much, much easier when you know you're always gonna outspeed it. And I had, I had a couple matches come up at the Worlds where people made their Landorus Jolly, Jolly Scarf, with yeah. the intention that, you know, because no one no one's running Jolly Urshifu, uh, no one else that I know. So they, yeah. they were like consistently the other Urshifu, and they were like, you know, I'll do the same thing to your Urshifu. You're also Terra Grass, you can't get out of the resistance. And 
you know, Myers ended up being jolly and ended up paying off really well, right? Um, other than that, it lives Terra Fairy Moonblast off of uh, non-boosting Flutter after Terra. This it it just isn't very bulky, so I feel like that's a good calc to hit. Other than that, it's just it might as well have no bulk to be honest. But yeah, <laughs> sorry, that's my next question. Right? Like, how did you feel about the damage? Right? Because 180 Jolly, it's not like max attack Jolly. How do you feel yeah. about the damage? It it was fine. Like I, I guess I didn't come up too much because I have a a Pelipper and a Chimpow, so there was a ton of turns where I, you know I'd have both set up. Uh, you know, I didn't miss it too much. There was one game where it came up. And it was against Terafumi. Uh, my Urshifu and Rain didn't KO his Torn. It was so close. Oh, that's crazy. So that's the only time I was like, damn, dude. Wh like, why? Why did I run this trash spread? But I ended up being, I ended up liking this spread in the end. Um, so, like, if yeah. you could change it, would you just go, like, max speed, jolly, max attack or something like that? Nah, I, I definitely keep it like this. <laughs> you keep it like this? Uh... Like, unfortunately, it didn't come up as much as we thought it would in the tournament. It's mm -hmm. just one of those, right? Like, had I run into the specific Flutter Man I thought I'd run into more, or had I run into... Like, I ran into a ton of Specs Flutter. I, I didn't run into very much Booster Speed, which I expected, right? Yeah, So I, 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 that makes sense. Because, like, Booster Speed is not as strong. Exactly. So you can live those. What about the Terra type Grass? Would you, like, stick with Grass, or would you change? Yeah, so Grass is definitely the one I'd, I'd consider changing the most. Out of, out of any change on this team, Grass is the one I'd consider the most. Um, you kind of need a Terra Hog on this team. Is it's what I realized after Worlds. It, it's it's a weird thing to say. Like most teams would rather not have one. I feel like you want one on this team because I I realize yeah exactly. Like I realize um at game three right in some sets I haven't Terra at all, and I, I you know like it's so wax. Every Terra type on this team is defensive. I don't think it's a mistake. I just like you know you need at least one one to you know to, to abuse Terra, and I feel like maybe that's maybe that's Urshfu. At the same time, it did come up a lot. Uh, Terragrass getting through Amoongus. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like it's a testing point. Like, I don't think either is better or worse. Um, the, the other ranked team that ran the same 6 as me, they got top 16, they ran Terra Water. So, I, like, I just think it's a testing point. I don't think either is better, I don't think either is worse, but Terra Blast yeah. is awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think that uh, I do think some, um, what's the word, some burst damage is helpful on any team. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at all the terrors. All the terrors are defensive ghosts flying. Uh, oh, he, I know we just went off the Goldengo. So why flying oh. over like uh, over like the the standard water? So, um, I this team ends up not having too much of an issue into Urshifu. Um, Helmet Pally, Terra Blast, Urshifu, Hands. You know, Goldengo just being very fast. It all ends up working out like very well into Urshifu. So you don't you don't have you know too much of weakness there. Water ended up being very annoying in some situations. You would hammer or get knocked off by Rillaboom. So flying helped there. In the other matchup at Helton, which is ironic because it didn't it didn't help in the the top eight match. It's Ursaluna. You can always just rage pattern nasty plot and get a free nasty plot right or a free make it rain. So it really helped there. Um, like other than that, wa water doesn't do too much more that flying doesn't. Like it really really helped not being weak to Rillaboom. That was really awesome. I got it straight up doesn't do anything to you. Yeah, and I guess with rain, you're not too worried about like heat train um, either. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I like it. I was thinking about the real of of, of holding a terra type. I'm just running like steel just for the extra damage right now. Yeah. But like, no, I think rain. anything's good. Like, like uh, I, I, I knew friends who were running a similar six. They were running dragon. I feel like. Yeah, I like dragon a lot. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, I, I definitely think water is definitely the the weaker terra. I don't think it's the weakest. It's just the weaker. Terra, I too. Yeah, had I got him with a different type, I would have steel. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just the, the it's it's crazy because I feel like Terra Steel Gold Dango, it seems like it increases his damage output more than like any other same type Terra that I've seen. Like, yeah, no, it's ridiculous. It's, it, it's ridiculous how much it does, especially after like a nasty plot. Like, it's yeah. actually wild. So uh, tell me about this uh, Iron Hands. It looks like a pretty standard Iron Hands. Anything special about it? Um. I think you had said you were getting the spread from someone else. Yeah, so I got the uh, I got the spread from my friend outside of the building group, um, Giovanni. I don't know how to say his last name. It's, it was C, but Polar Bear. He Costa, gave me the spread. No, not Costa. Sorry, uh, it, it, different one. He's also okay. a very good player. Um, so he he sent me the spread. He sent me a calc doc. I didn't read very much of it, but um, 
from what I know, like from what I knew is the team, I won't say it's weak to Iron Hands. Like I feel like a lot of teams have dedicated Iron Hand checks um, in like Landers is probably the main one, Fluttermain. They just have dedicated checks. Uh, this team doesn't have one. So you you, you do have to, you know, it's, it's definitely a skill matchup. Um, and for that, like initially I was going very fast hands to outspeed most hands. It's what I thought. It, like I thought 116 would outspeed most hands is what I was running on ladder. Eventually, I was running to more hands that would outspeed me than not. So I said, you know, there's no point of even playing this, like, this much speed if I'm not constantly outspeeding. So I went back down to four. Uh, I asked for the spread. Got this spread from my friend. Um, I kept Terra Grass. So Terra Grass really, really, really helps in the Iron Hands matchup. Because most of them are on Terra Water now. You can just spoil the opposing hands. If they Terra Water on you, you just Wild Charge them. Like, it's... I feel like Terra Grass is still very, very good. And a lot of people are kind of underrating it. You know, like, water is good, but grass is still amazing. Not having a spore immunity kind of ached me, so I don't regret running Terra Grass. I still think it's very, very, very strong. So, yeah, other than that, nothing special. Yeah, I think that, like, I, I understand, like, I've even tried Terra Water hands. I understand why people are going Terra Water, because, like, but on most Pokemon, but not necessarily on Iron Hands, right? Because, like, you lose to other Iron Hands. Certainly, Strikes ain't doing that much damage to hands as it is. I doubt it's knocking out. It's just so bulky. Um, yep. I think the the grass, because people are scared of like Heatran, but like Heatran is only clicking Heat Wave. That's not going to kill an AV Iron Hands or 252 defense. Yeah. <laughs> now, like, Champau can do very much into. A lot of people just wouldn't even bring Champau because, uh, you know, Scarfresh yeah. just beats that so, so hard. So, yeah, like it wasn't. It wasn't ever an issue. Yeah, like I, I love this hand spread and I definitely I'm going to use it again, even though I, I posted it publicly. But yeah, this is the best hands I've ever used. Yeah, I don't think like I don't think anyone knowing this hand spread changes how effective it's going to be. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those like hands is one of those like lab made Pokemon. that's always going to just be good. They, no, they the, the, the Paradox over. Pokemon, they put some of the they made the things in a, in a, a lab somewhere just to be this, this one was definitely MVP. Me. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, like hands probably like you can make a case for hands being like the most reliable pokemon in the format no exactly i, I don't think um, we'll say for hands like moving yeah. on i do think a lot of them have to invest more into defenses like the amount of you know physical attackers that are finally threatening iron hands is it, it's gone up a lot so i was very happy with the defensive investment um 76 is very very solid on on attack like, there are very few kills that change i feel yeah, uh, unless so you invest a ton more yeah 187 attack stat is, is actually astronomical as it's as it is like, right and you have a chip power and than, uh, stronger than urchifu with way less investment <laughs> oh dude i didn't even realize that <laughs> yeah you're, you're that is ridiculous and this is 187 no, that's, that's actually ridiculous no, this one is the, and your chip power that's max attack adamant is oh my god it's 189 and you're at hand no dude is 187. Oh my god. <laughs> i didn't realize that you yeah, look at the gold dangle 166 special attack like hands that's ridiculous strong. no hands dude. Has the least investment and it's the strongest attacker essentially on the team <laughs> no that's I, I didn't even realize that like uh, playing that for seconds, dude this this one is so broken so, yeah this one is nuts thank god incinero will be back soon <laughs> <laughs> so uh also look at the team because i noticed that while rillaboom was picking up a ton in worlds a lot of people ended up going back to amoongus which is why i think you yeah uh, what helps you do really well because uh right. bodango is immune you have terra grass uh pelipper is good into amoongus amoongus is good into amoongus uh <laughs> like i feel like yeah. you, have two, you have two terra grass you have an amoongus yep. and you have something that hits it for yeah. super effective like amoongus is that, that was definitely that was definitely very you. good because yeah because everyone was going terra water on their hands everyone was you know kind of in a way disrespecting amoongus i'd say even the winning team had a single uh immunity to to amoongus uh sorry i had two of them but like it, i feel like it kind of did go a little bit disrespected and I, I definitely can see that now right like i feel very thankful that i, I stuck with terra grass on, on most of my mods because that, that came up very very often yeah i think i think that happened in a stream match where like having the the grass terror really helped against the amoongus well yeah because like amoongus kind of dominated the tournament in a sense right because uh people just were not respecting it up they didn't bring enough immunities they didn't bring enough goggles some teams i don't think were carrying goggles which is unheard of exactly. in this format exactly. yeah I don't, I don't i don't know what happened i don't know why i think Amoongus just went so Rillaboom would be the thing yeah i don't know so since we're on the Amoongus, um 
uh you have a, it's a very very physically bulky set and like i've noticed a lot of people doing that now and like any insight as, as to why can you said someone helped you with the counseling gave you a document any anything in particular has you guys going with this super fizzy physically bulky bold amungus one of them was to live terrorblasts comfortably um for most landers and that did end up coming in the stream where it lived oh yes it did we're gonna HP. take a look at that so we're yeah look at that. that that was that was definitely one of the reasons um and the other was living facade always from ursaluna because oh. you're slower than ursaluna in trick room and you have leaf storm so getting two leaf storms off uh off on ursaluna is very 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 nice if that's you can also interesting that's not yeah something i knew it also lets you do that that combination of you know in trick room full health amongus and full health golden goat is gonna win the interaction because you rage powder nasty plot rage powder make it rain so it's very very you know it came up very very often and i just i'm very happy with the fact that we we chose bold with that much investment oh that's interesting because like i do like um so and i have enough to live like chimp house stuff but that's interesting that's actually really cool to know like even though Arizona, uh, i think people is it went from like really hyped to like kind of underrated now because people kind of like are afraid to use yeah. it but like so it, i think it still did well did well at worlds um but having that as a calc is actually really good like because people would have definitely snuck by with their earth lunas if you didn't have something like an amungus to deal with it yeah exactly that's actually really really cool especially because i think a lot of earth Luna go terra water now so they don't die to earth Fool instantly exactly exactly so yeah at least was very very cool. nice tech i don't feel like it's the best fourth move like just Especially because we're not helmet, you can't just constantly redirect and, and hope the earthquake chips itself. Yeah, I think so, you really storm the earth issue who on stream. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think so it's early like, a great item, by the way. Yep. No, it's so, so, so good. It's, it's what drew me to this team. Like, like being able to... It came up so often at Worlds. Like, everyone just runs taunt and thinks... And I guess that's what was, you were talking about, it, the Amoongus disrespect. It's yeah. partly because everyone just has a taunter. You just taunt the Amoongus. And, you know, uh, most people just assume that that's that's the end of Amoongus, but Mental Herb, that's just, that's just happen. So, yeah, like, so now, like, do you even bother clicking Taunt? Do you try to click Taunt twice? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, like, exactly. It's exactly what happened. Like, um, and that's why I feel like Amoongus was so good, especially on the stream match, which we're going to watch, right? Um, Amoongus was so good because their Taunter was Urshifu. Number one, it gets Leaf Storm. Number two, it has a Taunt twice. So, it was just very, very, very good tech yeah so uh i'm a big fan of this um the, the chien pao here because like i like having a dark type move on chien pao yep uh like a, that's not sucker punch because mm -hmm. i like being able to like uh, let me know if you were if there's something you had in mind but like i like being able, being able to either hit or force the terror on like chrysalis yeah chrysalis was the big one a uh, golden go i guess it wasn't for anything specific on this team it was just it's just very, very, very nice to actually have a consistent dark move. Yeah, because like you don't know, you drop Sacred Sword, but I think with uh, with close combat and drain punch, you don't really need Sacred Sword coverage. Yep. Exactly, uh, that makes sense. And I think like I know a lot of people were like were calc for stuff, like, jolly stuff, but like you can't really calc for Adam and Chien Pao for the most part, right? Unless you're like super yeah. investing bulk. Right, like um, one of the, one of the coolest things is a lot of twins at Worlds and in general, they are two fifty two HP, two fifty two defense, bold. That's max defense. With Jolly, it always lives. Uh, Ice Spinner. But with Adamant, it's a roll in your favor. 56% 50, chance roll in your favor. So, that was... I don't know. It's just always funny uh, when they expect something. And then, you know, it turns out you're Adamant. So, you yeah, know, like... Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't regret it at all going... I could imagine like, I guess, people just, like, tilting. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. But yeah, I love... I love Chimpao. Like it, this tour opened up how amazing Chimpao is. I miss Miascarada, and in a lot of ways, I feel like Chimpao and Miascarada have a lot of similarities. And it's just, it's so fun to use. Yeah, you know what? You just made me think of something. If like, if Miascar, if 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 Adamant Chimpao can can like be successful, then Jolly Miascarada probably can too. I feel like, oh, Jolly Miascarada. I see what you're saying. <laughs> In this format, yeah, yeah, because like what was killing it before was like fast flutter mains and like uh, icy mm -hmm. wind bundle. So like you, that bundle's thing, gone. You just get, yeah, bundle's pretty much gone. Flutter mains are not that fast, and if they are that fast, yeah. um, they're not bulky. So you could just like flower trick them and smoke them. So I think that actually is interesting. That means uh, this yeah. makes me have some guess... faith in me. <laughs> <and my mom. laughs> I hope so. That mod was so fun in series one. I forgot, I actually, to a modest fun to this guy. 
Yeah, he like it legit didn't get a fair shot at all. Yep. To like to have a like a, a shot at Worlds or anything like that. I, I um, wish it could. No, it yeah, I fun. think so too. Like, and I think we deserve the regional decks format for sure. No, I, I miss Smash Bros. so much. So it was fun right. to have it, you know, bring Carnet in in Shempo. For the team, um, I do want to go. To the, so here I have pulled up um, one of the stream matches. Um, I actually have it starting at game two uh, instead of game one. All right. So at this point, you're down 1-0. Um, and this is to get into the top cut. Uh, and Mao's like a pretty prominent Japanese player. Uh, really good player. Obviously, he's up 1-0. So what made you go with this lead to try to make the comeback? So in the previous game, Mao really got me good with uh, good Amoongus positioning and with Iron Hands. So I went with this lead, um, specifically because his hands is Terra Water, like we were talking about. I felt like I could consistently get a Spore on his Iron Hands, either making him swap out, or, you know, he has to eat the Spore. And I led Urshifu because he beats most leads on his team, I felt like, uh, except, for, uh, except for Iron Hands. So my idea was, I can U-turn on the Iron Hands, um, and then, you know, go, go into Golden Go, or like you turn into for, like get away from a spore into golden go and then use my own amoongus to spore his his team right because i didn't bring amoongus in the previous game but you know as you saw like it he led perfectly into me like I, he didn't bring so letters to the previous my, game my next question what so with all that being said what was yeah. going through your mind when this was the perfect lead against you for turn one <laughs> yeah. i was like i don't know i guess it just felt so i don't know like I, obviously there's like emotions in the game and it already hurt to be down a game and then it like it's like a kick in the kick in the side when he just leaves perfectly into you so yeah so like, i'm gonna play yeah. some because i want you guys to see not only did the not only was the lead perfect but let's look at turn one and how bad it went oh god no i gotta say this about Mao. he's too good like i feel like every other player they're shedding their pants about amoongus this guy doesn't care he like <laughs> he, he sees a threat it's urshifu he either expected the swap or he just didn't care and then he just he played perfectly now this turn one was perfect from him i'm gonna jump ahead a little bit okay so you swap out the movies here um in i think terrible and that's on so much we'll get the golden go in so maybe trying to rely on the ghost type to cause some problems that way but an immediate terrestrialization in this game they were held a little bit in the previous ones as that landerus goes with the terror flying so trying to put down huge damage uh, onto the side of the they better not um copyright me because they said we could co stream so they, they should be allowed me to use this uh yeah i think i've definitely seen it happen more than one channel should be good um, but, so you ever the that's a bulky lander right because that's not even a two hit ko out there right yeah <laughs> that, that was that was crazy, that's crazy right though. into the earth yeah oh. <laughs> Wow, so the Urshifu is down now. Yep. <laughs> so you're down 1 0. You lose Urshifu in turn one. What is like, what's going through your mind? What is like, what's happening here for you? It's like, I can still bring this back. And then he bolt switches. <laughs> My God, I was, like, I thought it was over, to be honest. <laughs> I, I was, God, I was like, Rudy perfect was like, turn one. That's rough. Yeah, that was perfect so turn rough. one. The only thing worse than a watch I shoot. Literally was full switch. He got that turn perfect as well. Yeah, because yeah, because now he can like get positioning advantage on you. Exactly. Bring out something to, th to threaten. Bring out the flutter main. I think he went with like which yep, automatically exactly. threatens your uh, threatens your mind. Exactly. So, so yeah, I honestly, putting, okay, so now you're yeah. putting your mind here. Right. Yeah. So I was like, either I can um, I can fake out and then Terra nasty plot or tip the KO. I don't know what my idea was with hands, but I, I can start. Uh, a little bit too, but yeah, I I I knew he wouldn't ever attack Golden Go here. So you know, I expected the the double up, the Moon Blast into Terra Blast. I thought I'd live it way more comfortably. Oh, so you expected to live that? I expect to live. I really oh, thought so I'd live. Let me, let me uh go ahead and so play the turn here out for the for the viewers. Um, also because you're playing, you don't get to hear the um the casters. No, no, no. <laughs> Listen to the casters, because that is actually yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> Cause yeah, I, I've heard this so many. It's so funny. That's a whole lot of damage. Golden Go goes also, right here, probably learning that you're faster than the um, Lando probably had to be great information. Yeah, that was very good information. Yeah, great play. Yeah, Ray Rose says great play. And then, oh, what is she? Yo, because um, I think without watching this, 
when I was, I, I had found some time to watch this. I was like, yo, what? The what? Yes. No, no I, I, those live. I couldn't believe, I, I thought I'd live it way more comfortably. I, I didn't think Flatter was that good, but you know, that's, I'm happy, uh, <laughs> yeah. happy I lived there. <laughs> yeah, that's actually nuts because like you live in like the entire... <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> oh, they, 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 they crack on the smile before they hold the stream. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel like I don't know what happened. I feel like I, I flipped it or something. I don't know what I'm so happy about. But yeah, no, this that one felt good. Yeah, because now, I really thought I'd live it. Like I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was he a spec flutter? Yep. Oh, so, so you know. Realistically, because it was a spec flutter, um, and because yeah, exactly, like Landorus, right? Even if you like, even if you lost the Moonglass, that's hurt. I don't. I think I still think you win the game. Yeah, I feel like it would have been very close. Yeah, <laughs> like different like, game, but very, yeah. very close. Because they, because he, he still can't hit the Golden Go. You could probably just tear the yep. hands. Um, and that's the and make it rain still kills the the opponents. Yep. So you probably so still yeah. in a good spot. That is would have been very close, yeah. I'm trying to think. Do you, um... Oh, you, oh, you, you also got the spore off into the flutter main, so it doesn't even do anything. Oh, so after... So you knock out the flutter main, he protected the Lando. You make another really good read here. I think you popped off pretty hard. Let me see yeah. if this the turn. So, I, yeah, I expected hands to come in now. But when I saw Moongus, like, I feel like I knew exactly what he was doing. This is, yeah. They always do this. They always, always do this play. Because Iron Hands never takes any damage from Make It Rain. Exactly. <laughs> it it, it kind of hurts to, to have to make that play. Like, I feel like... Isn't, isn't like yeah, I was very happy to get that. Like, in hindsight, isn't the craziest read? But it hurts to have to do that in front of, like... In, in the winning it, right? Like, it, yeah, it you, all comes you down to this. Wanna have to, you don't want to make, like, such an aggressive Exactly. So, realistically, yeah. Lando probably stomping tantrums and could win the game. <laughs> right. If it, if it, like... Exactly. If he, if, he, if, he, if he makes the read that you're going to make the read. Yeah, exactly. Because, <laughs> yeah, this is actually phenomenal. And you still have your Amoongus in the back at this point, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this Amoongus not really able to shut down. I think you're Amoongus. I think you're plus three at this point, right? Because of that close yeah, plus three. And you can see that they're doubling. Oh, we tried to protect the Amoongus. Fails to double protect on Amoongus. That is going to take a lot of damage this turn. Make it rain. Yeah. So, so that barely. I, I thought. I thought that would kill, but it didn't matter. Because two. Maybe someone else. Amoongus is ridiculous. So yeah, I can still what, calm. What made you prioritize getting rid of the Amoongus? I feel like. Double protect a little bit obvious in his end, so you could like get more damage out yeah. of like a shadow ball into the hands. What made you prioritize the Amoongus? Uh, I I didn't think hands could end game. Like hands just didn't feel like a Pokemon that could end game. Like even if he did get the double protect, uh, I have Citrus again. So my Golden Goal will take three wild charges at this point, and that's why I love Citrus. So that that was that's probably it. Like the fact that I knew my Golden Goal could take three wild charges, um, and then. You know, as long as I got rid of the Golden Go, he, he could put any of my team to sleep. Like, sleep was probably the biggest concern right here. Uh, if my hands went to sleep, it would have been a lot tougher, because then I would have to deal with the Protect End Games at the end. Uh, with the Landorus. That makes a lot of sense. Because, yeah, yeah, I guess knowing that you're faster than Landorus with Golden Go means, like, you can, you can handle it yeah. as long as you get rid of this Amoongus. Right. Exactly. Yeah, because Amoongus' hands could be a bit annoying. Yeah. We're so glad that you were not afraid to like pop off on stream either. I feel like so many players are <laughs> no. afraid to like celebrate and show emotion. No, yeah, and I feel like in a lot of ways, like I feel like it's a lot. It feels a lot more natural to pop off on stream. Like if you play me, um, we're across the tables, right? Like I, I don't show any emotion at all. You know, bad or good. It's weird. But on stream, it's just very, very natural to, to get very excited over it. It's a show at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that, I guess that's, that's just it. It's a show. Yeah. You got to cut that. And the Japanese players, they do not hesitate to pop off, um, which I respect a yeah. lot. Like, they will celebrate. They, they will flinch you, parry you, and celebrate it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you, I respect it so much. Now everybody's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. They Not them. They will pump that. Oh, yeah. When they when they when they ask you out, exactly. they I, I just think 
I just think it's it just feels much more natural. Like yeah, I don't I don't show any emotion uh, when I'm across from you on the table, but on stream, like I guess it's not even just that it's a show. Like I feel like you have a lot more room. There's a lot of people watching you, yeah. and you know that. It just yeah. it's very it feels very very different than than popping off in front of someone in front of the table. I think that's a little bit messed up. You're right across from someone and you're, you're popping off in their face. Because it's kind of like, but, like, yeah, and, and what? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like it's much, much more natural on stream, especially because, you know, I couldn't see him popping off if, if, if he was. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he couldn't see me. So it's, it's a lot, it feels a lot different. She's like a little bubble. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, they take the, uh, the recall here then you just auto yeah you never lose this yeah this 2v1 is also so like that's actually like pretty awesome um yeah you know since we're here was there any do you remember anything like interesting that happened in game three uh no i feel like game three was a lot more balanced like i feel like consistent a lot more consistent yeah um uh i i didn't expect him to 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 bring landers if he led this that's just not what I. Okay, so that's why like a lot of people are like, dude, why would you tear grass if he has ladders? And I think the casters they he, he did bring hinted landers. at it. No, not in this, remember, not in this matchup. Landers. Yeah, yeah, because I think once he realized his landers were slower than Goldengo, it yep. made it kind of exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was like, there's, there's... <laughs> like, so I, I guess really foresight. Like, yeah, that's really important. Like, I think one thing that people don't. One, with with the advent of like open teachers, I think information gathering in game is exactly. something people don't think about as much. But like that makes a lot of sense, right? Like once you once you realize that the Goldengo on this side is faster than the Landorus, essentially the Landorus can't beat the Goldengo. Like making yep. plus like certain strikes is always going to kill it. Um, and you know that the Lando can't kill the Amoongus. so yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, it makes sense to. I think that's a pretty safe prediction that it's actually not there. Yeah, like I guess it, it was more of you know he can never drop Amoongus. And I feel like he could never drop Fluttermane because it's just too, too good. Such the Terra Grass, so... It was, yeah, like like you said, it's a, it's a very safe prediction uh, to assume that he, he just didn't bring Landorus. Especially because he, he allowed the same thing in game one and also didn't bring Landorus. So yeah, now you're in a really good position because I feel like yeah. right now with these two mines on the field versus two, and he has no Terra Waters. So he only has like the Amoongus in the back. Essentially, he doesn't have that much to deal with the Amoongus. Yeah, I think yeah, I think once you read once we learned the Landorus couldn't deal with the Amoongus and the Fluttermane couldn't deal with it, it kinda like none of his team could deal with it. Which kind of, yeah. which I guess kinda of goes back to the lack of like respect people showed Amoongus this tournament. Right. This is a cool ass play though. But I feel like Mao and I, and I played another person I think was in, that was in their group uh in my round seven match. They all make the same play where they volt switch the Amoongus and go into their own Amoongus. That's really, really like really really that's, smart yeah that's really cool and, especially like getting that little chip down like i considered a what, what was it what did i do here uh oh, yeah my bad i considered a fake out into four because this play is just so so good i feel like volt switch is very very underrepresented on hands but it's so good for this exact play yeah, I think a lot of people go with heavy slam for like flutter main matchups because it is pretty scary, right. like staring down a heavy slam hands with a flutter main when they have a yeah, exactly. That's terror. true. This is a good, good play by him. He got back into the game, which was very tough to do in the position he was in. Yeah, very, very tough because I think the, the, the four mines in the field definitely f favored you with the time. Yeah, even now, so he it still, still kind of favors you. Yeah, I really expected. Flutter for some reason. I think I over that's definitely over prediction there. Uh like it, it wasn't it wasn't a necessary play. A safer play was wall charge into self palm puff. Huh. But yeah. So so when I saw this live, I actually thought you were you were um just trying to cover a switch but also hit the urgent fool if it didn't switch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that was the plan. Okay, yeah. But like I guess like wild charge does clearly, especially if you're gonna pop the terror grass. Nothing can really safely switch into it that well. Even like the opposing yeah, hands takes exactly. some damage. Right. So that was... Like, once you Terra Grass, the Amoongus on the other side, it feels kind of useless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, so when this is what Terra Grass, um, the casters were like, if he has Landorus in the back, it could be very scary, but he definitely did not have Landorus with the team. But he, like, he, he, he can just never not afford to bring um, Fluttermane. And you can never, never, never bring what, was it no Amoongus. Was Landorus goggles? Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think once the Amoongus comes out, um, 
instead of the Landorus, you know it's not there, right? Because that exactly. covers like wild charge and spore into that slot. Yeah. But once you see right, it, that's, that's out, good, yeah, you, you know yeah. it's not there. That's a good point. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you uh the Leaf Storm. Like Leaf Storm is such good like tech on the because the movement doesn't exactly. ever it's weird that it doesn't do any damage, but then when you hit Leaf Storm, it's like, oh, that's like a two hit KO. No, dude, oh, it's super one thirty six hit KO. <laughs> yeah. No, the thing has like a higher <laughs> base attack than Talonflame. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it has it can do a little. Yeah, just never invest in it, but like it's pretty awesome. No, it's it's very cool. Which yeah, that's like a cool ass stream moment, like seeing like Amoongus pick up a KO. That never happens. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, so once once we saw the flood main, it's pretty much over. It, it almost has the flood main, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's done. It's like, it's super clipped. Yep. Um, even though I think it's grass flood main, I don't think that matters much. Yeah, no. Uh, like, I heard, uh... A cool tech, though, for this tournament. No, very cool tech. Uh, very, very cool tech. It kind of came around, right? like, uh, was it was Yuri, Yuri Tata who used grass flood main. He was one of the first people to use it, and then it came back around at the World Championship. That was funny to think about. Oh, I think defensive terrors on Fudder are kind of underplayed right now for sure. Yeah. Um, like water, uh, I, I use like water Fudder I think is a good one. Um, yep. I think it's a really good one too because, like, I think most Fudder Mains die to wood hammer anyway, so it's like you're not really losing anything by picking up a grass weakness. Yeah, um, exactly. but grass to ignore like a moon because, like, that's one of the biggest like counters to Fudder Man, just re redirect the moon blast. Yep, yeah, so grass makes a lot of sense too, a lot of sense. But yeah, I think they were doing some damage, but you were doing most of more damage back. And like you had like pile up access. It was pretty Oh yeah, this is a really good right. switch. This is aggressive as hell, by the way. <laughs> like this is aggressive as hell. But granted, like they, probably, they don't never they have to they have to be doubly aggressive to get this right. Cause like no way do you moonblast into a moonless on purpose. Yeah, they have specs for two, so it oh, was yeah, yeah, they're locked in. They're yeah. locked in. And then yeah, it's very unlikely that they, they ever spore that spot. Exactly. He 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 definitely needed his Fluttermane to live, and, and so I, I I was definitely like you know, as long as Flutter dies this turn, it doesn't matter what happens to Chip. Yeah, at that point it's over. Um, yep. Because now it's just like you have to go Dingo. They have just hands, and we already established that their their hands can't kill your go Dingo fast enough. Yep. Exactly. See, so yeah, that, that's pretty much. Can't, does, does he did he play it out or not? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure he. Yeah, he, he, he I think it was one turn. Let me see. What uh, they doubled the Chimpo. So they went for Wild Charge. Oh, yeah. You know what it was? Yeah, I think because he he went all in on the Chimpo this turn, right? Yeah. He wants, he wanted to try to, like, get rid of it. Yeah. And once he, like, realized that you had, like, protected it, that was, like, his, yep. like, last his last call. Like, if I could just get rid of this thing, maybe I have a chance. Yeah. Also, Heaven Slam does so much to Amoongus. <laughs> it does oh, so, so much. So much. No, dude, the hands is ridiculous. I just... That's actually I, insane. I it's so good. Oh man, but that was the the stream match. That was awesome. And then after that, you went on. And you was you start like I, again another thing I respect. You went up there and you know called your shot. Like I'm going to win the world championship. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like you can't win anything of this magnitude without a little bit of like irrational confidence. Yeah, like you need it. Like you can't just be like I, I hope I win because like there's somebody <laughs> else who's gonna be like I'm gonna win. No, this mop the floor. This one felt good. I, I swear I was done. Like you know I'm done playing games because I I feel like if you ask any world's winner what their goal was, very very few of them would say win the whole thing. They expect to win the whole thing. I feel like you know I I put that on Paul Ruiz and maybe Wolf Glick. They're probably the only two people who could say you know based on my past performances and who I am I could win the whole thing. But I feel like. A lot of people, they never, ever dream of going so far. So I, at that point, I was like, you know, I made it. I made the whole journey. You know, regardless of what happens now, next returns, it doesn't matter. I'm in top cut and I'm, I'm, I'm going to win the whole thing. So yeah, because like at that point, I feel like it's hard to say in the beginning, but you make top cut. It starts to feel like close. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It starts to feel very, very close. Exactly. Like and like fifth place is amazing. Like because the only difference between fifth place and first is winning two sets. Yeah, like two or three sets. Like you go from uh, 
Yeah, because you you won. Yeah, you yeah, because you came in fifth. So like you win top eight, and you get to top four. You go to top four. So like you win a couple more sets, and it's like the difference between first and fifth, or like first yeah. and sixth. Like so, I think top cutting worlds is a tremendous achievement. Like. Like even for someone who's been pl- like if someone was playing ten years and they top court world that's impressive but like for someone who's been playing for like a year and only went to one live tournament prior, <laughs> one event prior yeah. and the second <laughs> event being worlds and then coming in fifth, like the the only time you get to play against these top players is like like online tours and stuff like that and that's if they're even yeah. participating because they you know they're like keeping their stuff to themselves, um, but like you just come through and basically run through damn near the entire field uh is is pretty insane and now with two canadian events you'll have at least two regionals this this year to go to right yep yeah exactly no i, I really appreciate the love like i feel like it was, it was one thing getting that achievement and it's another thing with just how much support there was even even before you know i guess I, one, one thing i realized after vancouver is how much love there is in the community even after you know forget getting fifth place or winning regional right when i made day two at vancouver I had nails messaging me like good luck. I had all these people I look up to like praising me. Like it just it's just it's a different type of experience, right? Like I feel like anyone anyone can achieve that. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely different, cause especially because like you will realize like you don't really, like you don't you probably don't get to interact with certain players a lot, but exactly. as soon as you get a little nor- notoriety, now it's like oh, well, everybody yeah. kind of knows my name. This is kind of cool. Like I, 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 <laughs> I feel you. Also, you know, you know the love is real when like uh, players from the United States start claiming Canada as North America. Like, obviously, <laughs> yeah, see, that was that's really funny. <laughs> like, obviously, no, it is part of North America, but they don't yeah, claim yeah. it as North America. They was like, please yeah. separate for North America. You <laughs> yeah, gotta win for North America. It's like, oh, hold on, wait a minute. Oh what my god. Oh, now, now it's part of. That's North America. funny. No, that was that was great. <laughs> that was, no, that was it, so it, it, funny. Oh my god, no, that's. That's hilarious. No, that's that was amazing. No, that was. And honestly, it just felt so amazing to have like all those people uh, behind my back. And I feel like that's only what makes that's what makes losing just feel a little that much worse, right? Like it's one thing to lose for yourself, and then it's one thing to feel like you let down everybody. Which I, you know, now thankfully I've gone over. Now I feel like yeah. Then I was very, very, very disappointed. Now I can look back and say, you know, top five is pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. Like, and like you're you're because I'm not sure exactly how old you are, but you're a young kid. Um, yeah. Obviously, there are players who've been playing this game for like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years. Like, and you've done like a lot. So, and like you have so much time to do so much more. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, I guess that's yeah. I guess that's one thing I look up to having that that time. Yeah, like you have so much time to do so much more, and like even if you like if you even if you ended your whole VGC career today, like top five at Worlds regional champion is like, that's like Hall of Fame stuff. Like <laughs> that's like legit Hall of Fame material. Like there are players who have like won Worlds like a decade ago or like went to Worlds finals a decade ago that people still respect to this day for those accomplishments. So I don't see why it would be any different with you. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate the love, dude. It's, I, I you know, I gotta I thank you, of course. Like you, you were, you said one thing was like, um, I don't even gotta wish you good luck for day one, because you're gonna make it to day two, and I know oh, you have a yeah. deep run. I remember, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. Oh yeah, I, did I quote that. that. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. And like, I gotta thank like, everyone watching. Right, like it's just too much love in this community, yeah. and I really appreciate that. that. I do remember that because like I was like, yeah, I'm not even gonna wish you good luck. You're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> run through this day one. Um, and essentially you did. You ran through day one pretty well. <laughs> I'm like you gotta make a deep ass run. I just know it because like. Just the way, like I said, the way you kind of like, because Vancouver just felt like watching you play felt dominant. Like, like you just seemed so unfazed by some of the big players you played against. Um, <laughs> the matches just seemed like kind of like, I'm like, damn, this guy getting every turn right. Especially because I think some of the matches, like, this is before I knew you. So you were playing against some people who I probably were like rooting for. I'm like, yo, he's just like getting every turn right. Like, who the hell is this kid? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, come on, son. <laughs> what's he doing? Oh, uh, but it's that's awesome. great! No, it's yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, so awesome. it's just it feels so good to you know to be on the receiving end of all that love, and I hope anyone that tries for it and, and like strives for it, I know that they'll get there one day too. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Like one one thing that I feel that hurt a little bit is when people start comparing themselves 
they're like, you know, uh, it's my third season and I couldn't even get half your combo. It's, it's like, it, it's just not. Yeah, your time will come. I, I guess that's, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, and like I think I think sometimes people get caught up with like especially with like you ingested because it's yeah, like, no, like and, and, and no, not I, Michael. Um because you guys have had so much success early. But like people need to realize like that is so far outside of the norm. Um Exactly. Before, no, I, I wish I wish people realized that like I, I, I can I agree with it now. It felt weird to say it before, but like no one should be ever you know, you should feel bad for yourself if you if you aren't you know if you aren't able to do that much like yeah like oh i didn't win my first season like so what exactly it's your first season it's your second season like some people don't get really good for like a long time with this game and that's like the natural progression of things yeah no it's it's fine like it, your time is gonna come i, I there i guess well, one thing i can tell you is how many players you look up to and the answer's definitely gonna be 20 or 30 like i feel like there's so much room for new players to come and you know, make it in for themselves. Yeah, There's like just in North America, I bet you could ask anyone who follows the team, they can name every time in a player because that's just it's just a handful. It's not like it's like a million players you have to find your way through, right? Like you just have to keep getting a little bit better. You crack that top yep. two hundred, you crack that top hundred, you crack that top fifty. And like once you yep. get into that like top fifty range, you're kinda like right in there with all like the best players. Right. No, it's it's like Yeah, I I guess that's like what I can tell anybody who's who's starting their first season or, you know, isn't at their first season, but wishes, you know, they achieve more, like, your time is going to come. It's just... So, don't, um... Like, with, uh, you know, strive for the best, but not, you know... Yeah, try, yeah you, you try for the best, but, like, if you fall a little short, like, you, there's it's it's Pokemon, there's always more games to play. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, that's perfectly saying. There's always more games to play. Yeah. Um. Anything you want to say to anything, or to anyone, anything you want to talk about before we get out of here? Uh, no. That's... I feel like we talk about it a lot, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I love your channel. Uh, you know that. I told you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was surprised. I, so like, it's always surprising <laughs> when like people who are like in the scene, you find out that they watch your stuff. Because like, yeah, who the hell am I? Like, why are you watching me play when you know like you play so much better? <laughs> so, like, what makes you decide to watch me play? <laughs> That's not true. Okay. <laughs> so like, I know you. I know these guys are better than me. What are they like? What are they learning from my channel? <laughs> Which is actually pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, I do try my best to put out some good stuff. So I hope people enjoy this a lot. Um, I'm hoping to be in Toronto. So if you're there, we Hell can yeah. link up. Um, Hell yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely going to be there. It. Yeah. Oh, well, obviously, yeah. Because like you live in Canada. So you yep. don't take any chance to get to a local regional for sure. Yeah. I'm going to definitely, if, if, once they announce it, because I want to announce it, I want them to announce it, and then I'm going to look at the flights. Um, Toronto is a beautiful city. I, I think they have, I right? Go. They announced the, the I think dates. It's the dates, but not the registration. I want to make sure I can get in oh, before, right, right, right. before I buy flights in hotels because yeah. as you can see with, uh, what's it called? Uh, Pittsburgh, 395 players. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's what that like, goes. If I, I'm not, if I, I mean, granted, I'd still like to go to Toronto regardless. So maybe yeah. I would, maybe I should look into booking that sooner rather than later. <laughs> maybe I should look into that <laughs> because I'd still show up because Toronto's a nice city. I really want to yeah, no, check that out. Beautiful. Um. See, so yeah, we're gonna wrap it up here. Oh, so like uh, this is, this should be dropping on Monday. You guys should be watching this on a Monday. If you guys are watching this on a Monday, um, look out for Semper on Moxie's channel because I believe you have a video with him dropping on Monday. Yep. Uh, yeah, and, that, and usually Moxie drops his videos about four thirty Eastern right now. So mine will be out first. So if you guys are made attention to this, uh, look out for that video. Um, it's one of Moxie's edited videos. Uh, you guys will see what they what they what they did. I won't spoil it. Just tune in and see what they were doing. It's actually really fun stuff. I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Otherwise, man, thank you guys for thank you for guys for watching. Thank you for joining me on the channel. I would definitely love thank to have you me back on. on the channel as well. Hell yeah, dude! Like I would definitely love to have you on here. When you start yours up, if you need any tips, any help, any pointers, holler at me. I will do whatever I can to help you, brother. Oh yeah, dude. No, I, I really appreciate that. I'll definitely reach out. Absolutely. Otherwise, thank you guys for being here. Question today. Tell us the first time hearing about Sempra. If it's this video, let me know, which would be very odd that you clicked on and not know who he <laughs> was. But uh, anyway, thank you guys for being here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.